The Gretchen Revolution begins here. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the latest Warhammer community preview for the Saga of the Beast Orcs rules. Specifically, it's just one subculture rule that pertains to Gretchen, but this one really is a game changer for all Gretchen units. I think it makes regular Gretchen squads, big guns and killer cans far more viable, so let's take a look at it. So this is one of these new Orc subculture rules that we're still not 100% sure how we access in the army at this point. They have said that you need to have a Battleforged army to unlock them in this preview, and it very much sounds like it's a benefit that you can gain for one of your detachments, and I suspect, but I'm not 100% sure, this will replace the clan culture. Hopefully we'll find out a bit more in the very near future, when the full rules are revealed. Either way, it can definitely apply to multiple units within one detachment, which is handy because this one looks very good indeed. The rule is this, Grot Mobs, and they have the Cheeky Zoggers subculture rule. Interesting choice of name there, I guess it sort of works for the rank and file, but I'm not necessarily sure I'd use the word cheeky to describe a massive killer can slicing me in half with a power saw. The background text reads, life in orcish culture is harsh, the strong dominating the weak at every turn. For Gretchen this is experienced more than most, and the embittered greenskins love nothing more than to gang up on others to take out their frustrations. This applies to Gretchen models only, models in a unit with this subculture gain a 6 plus invul save, and furthermore, when resolving an attack made by a vehicle model in the unit with this subculture, you can re-roll a hit roll of 1. So two very big universal buffs there. Off the top of my head, the things that this most affects are the regular Gretchen squads, killer cans that also have the Gretchen keyword, mech guns which are entirely crewed by Gretchen, Makari the very lucky Gretchen from the new Saga of the Beast box, and the Forge World Grot tanks. Firstly, that 6 plus invul save is a nice decent durability buff, particularly on the units with low armour saves such as the Gretchen themselves, and on those mech guns. Regular Gretchen do have a 6 plus armour save anyway, so it won't actually help them against any AP0 weapons, but a whole load of anti-infantry firepower has AP-1 these days, particularly with intercessors with bolt rifles all over the place, so reducing incoming casualties by 1 sixth against these sort of weapons certainly makes them a lot more viable and more annoying to remove. The regular Gretchen mobs don't do a ton of damage in the first place, so their main role is survivability, particularly camping on objectives, so this is a nice little boost, making them better at what they're good at already. It'll be very interesting to see if you can stack a subculture with a clan keyword such as snake bites, as they have a warlord traits that can and give them a 6 plus feel no pain in close combat for nearby Gretchen model. Now I have no idea whether we'll be able to stack those two abilities at the moment, it's really going to depend on the wording for how these subcultures work, but if you can then they could be very obnoxious to remove for the points cost. I think that this really helps out mech guns as well, particularly if you don't have a custom force field around to shelter them in. They only have a 5 plus save, and they're typically going to be shot by anti-tank weapons to try and deal with all of those wounds, so they're likely to be not getting any save at all in normal circumstances. Giving them a 6 plus save will certainly add up to more durability throughout the game. It's a bit less useful on the killer cans and the Forge World Grot tanks as they have higher armour saves, so it'll only come into effect when they're targeted by dedicated high AP anti-tank weapons, but it's still not nothing. Against things like Eldar Lancers and things, or Las Cannons and the Devastator Doctrine, getting a 6 plus save is always a bonus. Unfortunately this culture doesn't actually do anything for Makari at all, as he already has his 2 plus invul save and isn't a vehicle. A bit of a shame it would have been nice to have him included in this detachment. Let's move on to the second part of this detachment then, which is re-rolling ones to hit with vehicles. Now this is an absolutely fantastic flat damage boost to killer cans and mech guns. Reroll ones to hit is a 17% boost in damage output across all sources, and it can helpfully even stack with Daka 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 as well. So they really will be punching well above the weight of their base stat lines. I like the way that it helps out killer cans both at range and in melee as well. So this culture basically makes them better offensively in melee and ranged and also more durable, so it wins all round. In particular we might see a few more custom mega blasters on them, as you get to re-roll those rolls of one that give you a mortal wound. The same goes with mech guns as well. In particular, the custom Mega Cannon won't be hurting itself as much on rolls of 1 anymore, but just re-rolling 1s to hit is a flat boost to damage, and mech guns are already extraordinarily efficient when it comes to damage output. In the top tier of the competitive game, we often see lists running around with 18 Smasher Guns, which you could happily load into one Spearhead Detachment, to take advantage of both the Invul save and the damage buff, so one of the strongest Orc builds has just got stronger with this particular subculture. It's also worth mentioning that if you are playing with legends, then big guns should also be affected by these rules. 
Your standard cannons and zap guns will also be better, and again be a little bit more immune to killing their Gretchen crew. One of the things that I do find a bit more problematic for the detachment as a whole is that any HQ choices that you use won't gain any benefit from the subculture rules, as Makari doesn't gain anything from these, and of course if you include any other HQs then they'll be orcs and they won't gain anything either. But then there are HQs that the orcs have that it doesn't really matter too much what clan they are, such as weird boys for example, who can do their thing regardless of whether they're in one particular culture, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So overall, I really like this rule, it's a decent buff to a lot of orc units, in particular to the very frightening, weird and wonderful mech guns, and it means that they're only likely to see more play in the new codex. Both this one and the Pyromaniac subculture have both been really interesting, and I'm so looking forward to seeing the rest of them hopefully tomorrow. In particular, I've got my eye on the Feral Orcs one, which hopefully should be a buff to standard boys in some way, but I guess we'll see. If the Orcs codex drops tomorrow, I will absolutely have a Saga of the Beast review out the same day, so feel free to subscribe to Orspets Tactics if you'd like to hear all the rules as they come out, or just check back later. In any case, thank you very much for listening, let me know what you think about this Gretchen subculture down below in the comments, and how you think it might change your lists. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page, the link is down in the description below. There are a few benefits of being a member of the page, in addition to supporting the creation of new videos. At the moment we're holding a poll on which Orc videos are coming first after the new book is released, so if you'd like to vote on that, check out the link down below in the description. In any case, thank you very much for listening, I'll hope to see you guys next time.